Hello and welcome uh, to The Couch, uh, your prime football show right here on Zimbabwe Press Television Network. And uh, yeah, last week we were not here, but uh, we are back and we are excited. What are we talking about uh, today? Well, our focus is on the Warriors and we are saying Spotlight is on uh, new Warriors coach Norman Mapeza. Will he save uh, the seemingly sinking Warriors ship? Or if you want to put it across like this, can he resuscitate the Warriors World Cup dream? Remember, uh, upcoming games against Ghana are his first in charge and uh, the team has left for Ghana today. So so yeah, on the couch, I'm joined by the couch squad. Today it's a bit different, eh? Um, we normally have, uh, well, you see, there's a guy who's, who's on the bench today. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever going to get in. <laughs> Momo is not here, but uh, we've got uh, Chido Chashemanua. She's joining us on the couch. Good to have you on the couch. Thank you so much for having me, Howard. Excited to be here. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's see. We'll see. We'll see how this one goes. And uh, more is not here but Marco is here. Thank you very much Howard. Um, many thanks to the team, uh, the coaches for bringing such a player. I mean look it's a uh, she's a welcome addition to, to the team and we welcome. let me welcome you. I'll give you a nickname before the show ends that we will carry forever. I hope it's a good one. It'll be a good one. It'll be a good one. <laughs> Does it need to be a good one? <laughs> a nickname is still a nickname. Fair. So it depends because this is your first start. So it depends how you... My performance. Yeah. <laughs> your performance, yeah. yeah. It's going to determine a lot of things. So the name is going to come from there. So this is the Couch Squad for today. And uh, yeah, like I said, the, 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 the show is going to be focusing on the Warriors today. And uh, we are asking that question. Mapeza, yeah, a lot of uh, eyes on Norman Mapeza will be able to resuscitate the Warriors dream. But first, let's talk the Chibuku Super Cup, which uh, resumed a couple of uh, weeks back. And uh, yeah, there were some exciting matches that were played, especially in Group 1, uh, where we've been covering live here on ZTN. Uh, Danmos uh, beating uh, Yada by a goal to nail. This was midweek. Then we also had uh, some very entertaining weekend games. Harare City winning by three goals to one over Yada. And um, we also had Caps United and Arantxos pulling out a one or draw. So this was this is what, what was happening in uh, a group Group one, the teams that are in Group One, uh, uh, based in uh, Harare at the National Sports Stadium, but the other matches, the Sunday games, were played at the Baobab Stadium in Ngezi because. Uh, uh, National Sports Stadium was not available. So these are some of the pictures that are coming through on your screens right now. Dynamos, uh, that goal that was scored by Ghanaia in Port uh, Sylvester up here. The only difference, th that made the difference in that game against Yada. So, Makom Borero. Dynamos, 20 points. They've amassed, they've qualified for the quarterfinals of the Chibugu Super Cup. Highlanders and Chicken in Bulawayo also qualified. Then Cranbourne Bullets qualified from Mutare. And FC Platinum and Gezi Platinum Stars qualified uh, uh, from that group. That's group four based in Zishavani. In fact, let me just uh, break down how these teams were pulled together because uh, PSL are using the Chibuku Super Cup as a precursor to their league program which is expected to start at the or at the end of uh, this month and uh, so they pulled the teams in their localities you will find that there are two Mutare teams in Mutare Tenax and um, Manika Diamonds and joined by two Arari teams uh, the two uniform forces sides uh, Black Ranos and uh, Cranbourne Bullets. So from that group, Cranbourne has already, already qualified, so we'll see who is going to join them for the other slot in the quarterfinals. In uh, Zishawane, group four, the two platinum teams, FC Platinum and Gezi Platinum Stars, based there, and they've already qualified, so that means Wawa and Triangle are not going to be part of the quarterfinals. In Bulawayo, group two, Highlanders and Chicken in qualified at the expense of Bulawayo City and uh, Bulawayo Chiefs. Then in Harare, it's only Dynamo. Remember, Harare has got uh, 60. These are uh, Herenchos, Gezi Platinum Stars, Yada, ZPC, Kariba, Caps United, and Dynamos. So, who is going to join Dynamos from the Harare team? Let's start from the Makombore. Well, I would think Harare City, because they've got the game in hand, they're second on the log. And then you look at the other team that are supposed to be competing with them ZPC, Kariba, Poor, Caps United, are Abismo, Yada, Herenchos, you're going to talk of them as serious football teams as far as this cup competition is concerned. So, I would fancy. Harare City to join Dynamos. A Dynamo side that hasn't been impressive in terms of how they go about business. But this is a Dynamo side that's just winning. A Dynamos, it's not about how you do it, it's just about doing it. 
Does it need to be pretty at the end of the day? It has to, because you're dynamos. And Sakunda gave you money. I mean, look, you are dynamos. You are paid to entertain. I mean, I mean that's what I expect of dynamos. You're a big brand. Okay, you're have, you have winning. Entertainers put up a show. But against Yada, Sylvester Appiah scores. And for the last 15 minutes, it's Dynamo's defending. Like what Dynamo's do. And when you look at it, you say, Sandy Chizambo was successful with Dynamo's playing what kind of football? We score, we shut up shop. Calisto Paso was successful with Dynamo's doing what? Scoring and shutting up shop. Tondera Indiraya is heading towards that. Mm. Success is what? Where Dynamo's wins matches. But their fans will go like, Aish, it wasn't, oh, you know, but... Uh, but if they want, yeah, they have. All right, so I, I, I wanted to talk about Group uh, 3, based at Sakuba Stadium. Crumble Bullets have already qualified. But uh, just briefly on uh, Group 1, because uh, looking at the other groups, Highlanders and Chikirin, a lot of people were just anticipating that these two teams were going to be the ones that were going to go to the quarterfinals from that group in, in Bulawai. FC Platinum is Ngezi Platinum Stars as well. Yes, a bit of competition from uh, Triangle, but um, look, it has just gone according to the script. And, uh, well, those who uh, were supposedly writing the script were hoping Diamonds and Caps United were going to come from uh, Group 1. But um, Caps United, things not going great there. Dodo under pressure and uh, a little bird was telling me that uh, he was sitting on an ultimatum, that game that he drew with, um, with uh, uh, Herentials. I don't know much about that, but uh, doesn't really look like they're going to be part of the quarterfinals. Look, ordinarily, Darlington Dodo is not your top draw coach, your A-game coach, your big team coach, but he's there. What are you saying? I'm saying Darlington Dodo at Caps United, he looks to be... Out of place? Out of place, yes. Out of his depth? Mm, yeah, and he's proving that. But look at it, Caps United themselves, their problem is in the boardroom. And that's one thing that people are not saying. Those boys are demotivated. Yeah, you, need, you really need to, to get to the bottom of this. Because if you say it's in the boardroom, I'm seeing a different picture. Maybe there are fights between the shareholders. No, Twain look. Piri, Namo Tutisani. Yeah, look, you the little bird, which is not necessarily the little bird <laughs> that told me, <laughs> is this. Jere and Namo Tutisani are not on the best of terms right now. And the players know it. And it's showing. If you remember that uh, audio that circulated where Innocent Mchaneko was telling to design that you don't own this team, it's playing out right now at Caps United, and those boys are demotivated. Do you think, with or without a coach, Caps United can fail to beat a rental? Because I'm looking at, you know, the yeah, players I mean, they've got. Clive Augusto. Just say, Ako, just say, Akuman, Taysa Marab, Imani Gim, Ijgevana. You don't even need a coach. You don't need, need a coach. <laughs> it's just about winning a game. <laughs> All right, let's 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 now go to Group 3, based at Sakuba Stadium. Cranbourne Bullets, um, well, they are part of the Premier Soccer League for the first time. They qualified uh, for the 2020 season, which then carried over to 2021. They are part of uh, the big boys now, but they've surprised all in sundry. They are in the quarters. Then there's Manika Diamonds, there's Tenax, and there's Black Rhinos. Who is likely to join them? I think Black Rhinos, by virtue of the experience, um, what it came down to then when you say Cranbourne Bullets versus Black Rhinos, who's more Black Rhinos? Nes but Saru Chera or the, or the, or the <laughs> Black Rhinos coach? Hebert uh, Maru. Hebert I mean, I mean, Yabo is Black Rhinos more than Hebert Maru. And it's showing. It's just a game where Cranbourne Bullets needed to prove that look, we might be the poor cousins, but we play better football. But I believe Black Rhinos will go through. All right, uh, so that's the action that's happening in the Chibuku Super Cup, the precursor to the 2021 uh, Premier Soccer League season. And uh, it's going to be starting at the end of uh, October when uh, the league uh, tournament uh, would have reached the quarterfinal stage. But that's not the only football that's been played in uh, Zimbabwe. Well, that's got a Zimbabwean team. We've got uh, the latest football team, the Mighty Warriors. They are in South Africa playing the Kusafa tournament. And... Uh, yeah, a bit of a false start. Our first game against Tanzania, we were beaten by three goals to nil. But uh, we came back, we came right against Botswana, and um, the ladies scored three goals without reply. So, yeah, three nil, three nil. Yeah, the other one 
was a good 3-0. So Chido, I'll focus on, because I know you were keeping tabs on the Mighty Warriors. Um, what happened in that game against Tanzania? Well, coach is saying that the girls have been inactive for a really long time. I mean, obviously due to COVID-19. So she is blaming it on that. The fact that the girls haven't been in the game and keeping um, up to the standards that they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to have to, I, I beg to differ. How many more times can we keep on saying, oh, COVID-19 has been... Yeah, because that, that was going to be my, 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 my next question. Because you go to the men's game. Every coach is saying, ah, no, we have been inactive. But it's the same for all the other teams. Right? It gets boring now. You can't, th there's no way you can keep on saying, oh, no, the people aren't playing. So that's mm. and, why. And besides that, remember, Black Rhinos were playing the Women's uh, Champions Precisely, League. Precisely, they and, were uh, in Durban. Yeah, just the recently. bulk of that Mighty Warriors team. And they did really well. And obviously, it looked quite promising because I think she picked about eight people, eight um, players of the from players the, from... Yeah from uh, Black, Black Rhinos Queens and so I thought that obviously that's going to you know change up the game but clearly not so it's looking a bit um, it looked a bit tense but I think with Tanzania it's very important to look at the team itself and it looks like Tanzania has been investing you know in their young players mm -hmm. if you look at it now that team that is playing that played um, against the Warriors recently is a team that has been together since under 17 under 20 mm -hmm, and up mm -hmm. to now. So they're pretty much intact. And so I think that's th that's the advantage that Tanzania had. Yeah, I agree. Because I, I went to Tanzania, Zimbabwe, played against Tanzania en route to the 2014 um, Olympic Games. And uh, it had a lot of young players during that time. And uh, now those players have matured. So yeah, you, you, you've got a point. But there's another school of thought now because... Uh, COVID, yes, but in Tanzania it was business as usual, eh? Remember the They refused to acknowledge such a thing as COVID. <laughs> yeah. Were there any masks that would be worn? No, no, one was no wearing mask masks. stadiums were full mm -hmm. and all that. Do you think probably that's another advantage that yeah. Tanzania had? Yeah, I guess it is an advantage because, I mean, they weren't taking... They weren't following the regulations like, okay, n no training, no whatever. And yet in our country, obviously, mm -hmm. the restrictions mm -hmm. were on. The ladies weren't able to train until recently. So, so is, is that why we then beat Botswana 3-0? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, maybe, maybe. It's because Tanzania wasn't following the rules. We were, and then, you know, it is what it is. But hopefully mm. the girls can continue on the streak that they've now mm. started. And do you think Botswana. probably they'll go all the way and lift the Kusafa tournament, the cup? Well, there's a lot at stake because, I mean, let's be honest, the Warriors didn't really, like, you know, do well, yeah. they didn't do well. So the girls really want to make sure that they redeem the boys to mm -hmm. a certain extent. Okay. So hopefully we'll see yeah, that. Under we'll pressure. Yeah, there's pressure, quite a lot of pressure. All right, so this is what's going to happen here. You heard from Chido, you heard from Marco. So it's, it's going down here on the couch. So what are we talking about? We have talking about, uh, we've spoken about the football that's being played, but let's focus on the crux of the matter. The, the Warriors who have left Zimbabwe for Ghana. Remember the World Cup qualifiers are starting this weekend and Zimbabwe is away to Ghana. And after a couple of days, we come back because we'll be playing them at the National Sports Stadium. So we are asking, the Warriors have got a new coach, Nomen Mapesa, who re replaced the Stravko Logarusic. And Mapesa's first game will be that one away in Ghana. Can he save the seemingly sinking Warriors ship? That's what we are asking. So briefly, Chido, can he save the Warriors? Mapesa. Hey, well, the Warriors are really like in the trenches right now. And um, a lot... Can he save them? Okay, simple question. Yes. Hey, um... Yeah, yes. Yes, <laughs> not alone though. Obviously. Yeah, that's a yes, <laughs> yes. Yes, because thing is, I mean, it's not it's not up to him alone. He's not the one playing in on the pitch. It's not him. But, but he's directing the orchestra. Fair. Yes, he can. Yeah, I think I, I believe in him. Yes. Yes. Okay, now my yes is better. Yes, he can. Ah, okay. <laughs> will he be able to save the Warriors? I think he will. He will. He won't let us qualify though. I mean let's <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about saving the Warriors, what so, are we talking about? We're talking about saving the dignity of the team. When these boys go out there, carry our flag, sing the Stop right there. Okay. Stop right there. We'll be right back. Uh, you're watching the couch right here on Zim Papers Television Network.
4 May, transforming men into gentlemen. You're watching the couch right here on ZFS Television Network. What are we talking about today? Well, we are asking this question. Norman Mapeza is the new Warriors coach, taking over from uh, the fired Zdravko Logarusic. So will he be able to save uh, the Warriors? So on the couch squad, we've got uh, Chido and uh, Marco both saying yes. So now we want to hear what the, the yeses really mean. But uh, the first game that uh, Mapesa is going to be in charge is away in Ghana, the World Cup qualifiers. Remember, we played two matches against South Africa and against Ethiopia. We drew with South Africa at the National Sports Stadium, went away to Ethiopia, and we were beaten 1 0. So, what's in store this time around? New coach. Um, are there any new players? Yeah, one or two players that have been included in the team. Are they going to play? Well, we'll see from uh, Numen Mapeza's uh, selection. So apart from the poor results that the uh, former coach had, winning one in 14, uh, Mapeza is as a, under a bit of uh, pressure and um, because that's the only change probably that's the team, uh, that the team has made. So what we did, we caught up with uh, Norman Mapeza before the team departed. Well, they've already departed for, for Ghana, but we spoke to him moments before their departure and we asked him about how he's feeling, how the pressure is and the pressure cooker. Okay, look, uh, looking at the squad, I've looked around, I've looked around and... Uh, in terms of the current form, I think the, the guys we have selected for now, they are the best players who, 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 can, who can do a job for us as, as a nation. And uh, I don't think it was going to be, to, 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 to be wise enough for me to make some also changes. Because if you look at our situation in the country at the moment, there's no football. You know, and uh, I've been looking around. If you look at all the top, uh, top leagues in Europe, if you, if you look at uh, countries like Germany, we don't have anybody who's playing in Germany, save for, 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 for Fabish, who's playing, I think, in, uh, in the second division. Then if you, if, if, if you go to France, of course, we've got Muniz and Tino, but Tino is injured, but Muniz is here. Then if you go to Belgium, we don't have anybody. You know, and uh, so looking at that, I thought those guys who played uh, in the last, uh, in, in the last uh, two matches, they did well, despite uh, us not getting the positive results. So I decided to, to give them a chance as well. So that's uh, the Warriors coach, Norman Mapeza. So that's the first question that we asked about pressure. And you know, so he spoke about the players that uh, we've got. And there are no changes, you know, to the team that was doing duty for Zdravko Logorusic. And um, I don't know. He, he accepted the job. Obviously, he believes that he can change. What, what can he change looking at probably the selection? Because uh, almost all the players that he has called are here, save for Tino Kadewere, who was injured. Now he's playing because he played about 10 minutes of the Europa League game mm -hmm. his team played. But all the other guys are there. They are viable. For selection, well, say for Kama Billet, who's sitting on a, uh, on, on he, who is suspended because he got two yellow cards in the first game and the second game. So automatically he's suspended for the first game away in Ghana. What can Mapesa change, really? Well, I mean, we have those players that weren't able to uh, come early on uh -huh. due to COVID. Oh, the British Brigade. Yes, we've got Nakamba, we've got... Um, Jordan Zemur. Yeah, mm. so I think that can make a bit of a difference, the fact that they are back now. Obviously... Um, it's a bit less dramatic now since the Europe said that if they're mm -hmm, jabbed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they can be able to go back to their um, their bases. To their bases, but I think uh, yeah, I think that can be a bit of a change that can be coming in. But I, I agree with you that him accepting the job shows a lot of confidence and a lot of um, belief in the team. Maybe he had no choice. You never know. Maybe he was cornered to take the job. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think that does show that he has belief in one or two changes that he can make. But I don't think he can make many changes. Otherwise, it may be disastrous. Mm -hmm. So Chido talks about the British Brigade. Yes, it's, it's obviously welcome to have Jordan Zemura, Tenai Darikwa, Marvelous uh, Nakamba back in the team. But uh, it's not only for Zimbabwe, hey? even Ghana, their stars are there. There they are you. Jordan, are you? They are there because uh, Ghana is not on the red, re red list, uh, so to speak. And uh, they will bring out a very strong team. That guy, that boy from uh, Arsenal party, mm. is also in that team. Ah, but you can be talking of serious football, then talk of Arsenal players. But <laughs> having said that, let's, let's talk about football. Um, look, 
What Norman Mapeza will change is bring presence on the bench and in the dressing room. He will bring a voice that the players will listen to. He won't say one thing and the player says, ah, ah, nabasa manu. Because that instruction needs to be followed up. But with Dravo Logarusic, he said one thing, the boys said, ah, look, it doesn't matter. It was more like comedy central. It was, yeah, it was just comedy central. <laughs> they didn't believe in him. Because the material then is the same, like Norman said. He wasn't going to pluck out players out of the moon to come and play for us. He has made a decision. He's called the same players. But what will change then is the attitude. I, don't, I won't cry too much if we go to Ghana and lose. But we need to put up a show to defend that flag, to defend that national anthem, to show that these guys that are playing football, maybe they are not as good as the Ghanaian players. Maybe they're not playing in the best league as the Ghanaian players, but they're fighting, giving their all for Zimbabwe. And that's all we want from Zimbabwe. We don't expect this team to go and win the World Cup. No. But we expect you, them to... You, you want the patriotism. I want them to die for this nation. Mm -hmm. I want them no, to... No, I see. You know, I see why you guys were saying, yes, yes, you will be safe. Because you're trying to be patriotic. No, look. <laughs> <laughs> the result, yes. But let's be sure. Where we are right now, if you are down there, down at the bottom, if you take one step up, if I done something positive, you say yes. Yeah. So, so believe you will. I believe you will. All right, uh, we still have Norman Mapeza though, and a lot of uh, people expected him to change the team, but he has selected the majority of uh, the players that were doing duty under Stravko Lugarosic. And the few additions include uh, the locally based players, Raman Gutsanzira and Kelvin Madzongwe. Let's, uh, well, probably because he, he is in charge at FC Platinum. That's why maybe he has included the FC Platinum players. Maybe. L let's hear from him. Let him explain what's the reasoning behind including these uh, locally based players. Yeah, they've been playing in the CAF Champions League. It's more of the same. Of course, uh, it's a bit different because it's no World Cup qualifiers, but they've, they've done very well in, 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 the, in the CAF Champions League. So at least. They have good knowledge of the African terrain, you know. That's why I brought them in. You know, we, we, they, they need to, to also to to see how how how, how, how it, it works in with, with the national teams. But uh, I've been happy with their performance. You know, I've, I've converted Raman from uh, an attacking right uh, midfielder to to, to uh, a right back. You know, he's, he's more flexible in, in playing different roles in the team. And uh, if, if you've got two or three guys who can do that in the team, it it, it, it gives you an edge as you prepare uh, for, 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 for an image. So Norman Mapeza explaining uh, the reasoning behind including Raman Kutsanzara and uh, Kelvin Madzongwe. So Kelvin Madzongwe is a, is a midfielder, is a defensive link uh, midfielder. Um, I heard a lot of people now saying, no, Madzongwe is only in the team because he can speak uh, brilliant English. I don't know what they, <laughs> me <laughs> they meant by that. But look, he has made it to, to the Warriors team. And I think it says a lot about uh, probably their pedigree because here's a guy who's coaching these guys locally and he has included them. He is not taking any, any other player. And he says because they have been playing CAF Champions League, but would they be good enough to command probably a first team jersey in that Warriors squad? Well, I think the chance that they're being given is very important. Mm. And I do salute, like you just said, this is a, a local coach now looking at local players and making sure that they get a chance. It already shows that Mapeza being in that position shows that he knows the people better than, I mean, the previous coach. And so I think we'll have to see. Obviously, there's a lot at stake, but I think that move in itself is one that was very crucial. Mm. I'm not sure what you could just say. I'm not sure what you could just say. Mm, you know, exactly. in, in as much as I'm supposed to call <laughs> <laughs> players 22. Wait, 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 wait. Mo is on the bench. Sakamun <laughs> Wanu. I'm supposed to call 22 players. Mm. Okay. And I want to carry people that, one, believe in me, two, they're going to be my ear in the dressing room. Oh, you get where I'm coming from. Spies. You get where I'm coming from. Because oh. uh. everybody has got their boy. Abbas Amid, you understand the shit. Everybody said, why is Sandy calling Abbas Amid? Mofu and Lazarus Moon. Whatever team that you had, Lazarus Moon would start. 
But also then for, for Raman Kutsanzi, let's look at it. Chimwemwe Raman Kutsanzi always a better player. I think Raman Kutsanzi is a better right back at the moment. So look, he has made decisions. Kelvin Mazunga is a decent player. Will he start? I don't think he will. Raman Kutsanzi, can he start with Darigo? I don't think he can start. But if they, if they played enough football, good football, to be called up, I think they have. I think they have. Hmm. All right, uh, so those are the players that, that are playing for Norman Mapesa, the, the locally best players. So let's go further afield. And uh, Jordan Zemura was deployed as a midfielder in the past. And uh, we asked Mapesa if uh, the Bournemouth left back who played the same role here with the Warriors. Look, what I need to do first is to, to sit down with, with, with all the guys in the squad, save for those guys who, who maybe those guys from Meso Bradnam, whom I know, definitely. But for the rest of the guys, I think I need to sit down with them, I need to talk to them, I need to understand exactly where, where do they think if they play, they give, they, they'll play with the best of their abilities. So it's the same thing with Zemura, I'll sit down and talk to him as well. If he says, coach, look, uh, I've been playing more as an offensive uh, left-sided midfielder, and if he's comfortable in, in playing, in that, on, uh, playing on that side, then definitely I'll use him on that side. But uh, what I want to do is to, to, play, to play players in their position with, if, if they're going to play, they'll play with the best of their abilities. So yeah, uh, it's all about, former Pesa, it's all about uh, man management. It's all about how you manage the players because I'm, I'm looking at a situation where he comes into the dressing room, you know. He is a very um, influential uh, coach, if I can use that, because he played the game at the highest level. He played uh, UEFA Champions League with Galatasaray. And he knows, you know, the top, you know, European football styles. And he says, you know what, I'm not going to probably look at what the previous coach was, was doing. Jordan Zemura plays uh, left midfield or left back. And then I'm simply going to ask him how comfortable he is probably with uh, either positions. How important is that, looking at the main management style of managing the players? That dialogue is important because, I mean, it shows that the coach is uh, believing in the, in the player. And mm -hmm. I think already, me as a player, if I'm being asked, where do you want to play, where are you more comfortable with? I feel more comfortable and I think I will be able to bring it on because I know myself best. So obviously Zemura knows himself best. So he knows that, okay, cool, maybe he's going to look at Ghana and the Ghanaian players as well and determine, yes, I've played in between both these um, positions. But for this game, I think maybe I will be more useful here. So I think that's a very... Um, Mapes is really just giving me um, mature vibes. You know, like all this, mm. all these things that he's doing, I think that's just very mature, to say the least, and not look at what um, Loga has been doing and where he's being, um, where he would have put him. So I think... Mm. So just, just another uh, question, a quick question. So at Bournemouth, Jordan is a left back. So he comes to Zimbabwe and uh, he's playing left midfield. So my question is, maybe he told uh, the previous coach, Logo Rusic, that uh, I'm comfortable mm. playing left midfield. But oh. we've seen how influential he is playing for Bournemouth, the mm, left back. Mm, he even mm, scored a mm, goal. Mm, mm. Do, I mean, look, gentlemen and, 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 and lady, <laughs> do you think that uh, guy that you got from Croatia um, <laughs> had, uh, had, had it in him uh, that we need to sit down with his players and talk to them? Or he brought his template and said, I don't think we can pass the ball too much. Let's just hoof it up front. I don't think he did. Maybe, maybe, maybe he did. If only Zifa had not gagged him, you could have been speaking right now. But look, he said, no, you don't speak. You get your money, you shut up, and you leave. You play where I tell you to play. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just simple, isn't it? But look for, I agree with the, with the queen here. Um, Mapeza sounds is, like is, the queen. Is, is, is yeah, that the nickname? Yeah, that's, she's the queen. She's the queen. I like her. <laughs> I like her eloquence. Yeah, we, we need more of her. So I'm not sure where you're going to put more more. But look, <laughs> my, <laughs> look, no man sounds like he's a football coach. And he sounds like what? At that level in the national team, you're not going to tell those boys how to control the ball. You know that? Mm -hmm. Or how to score. Or how to track a man and stuff like that. Because that's the stuff that every day kind of coach deals with. You're going to play in their side, into their minds. You're going to win them over by your gospel. Numen Mapeza's first team talk will make or break this stint with the Warriors. Will these players believe in his gospel? That's what will matter. His first drills 
Do they believe that they will play football in a manner that they will enjoy? Fair and fine to say Logarisic wanted uh, Kamabila to put in some defensive shift. Do you think Kamabila is meant to mark? I don't think he's meant to mark. He's meant to glide with yeah, the ball. Yeah, but if you ask him to do that, he will do that. Because the I coach has asked him asked, to do that. But are we best deploying him there? We are not. If you ask Washington Arubi, go and play gunman and put knowledge in Sona and goals, knowledge will wear the gloves because you have told him to do so. But we are not deploying him to the best of his abilities. All right. So Kama Billiard is uh, traveling with the team, or well, has already traveled with the team to Ghana despite uh, suspension. Remember, he got a yellow card in the, that game against South Africa. He also got another one against uh, Ethiopia. And uh, that automatically meant that uh, he's not going to play the first game against Ghana. But the return here, he will be available for selection. So he has traveled with the team. And um, the technical team had highlighted that they want him to be integrated in the team and the reverse fixture. So we asked Mapeza how important is Kama to the team and uh, if he's still the same player that he coached a couple of moons back. Kama, uh, if you look at uh, what was happening to him after, after he got injury, it was like on and off. It was on and off. I also want him to come in so that he trained with, with the rest of the guys. And I also want to assess him. I've worked with Kama before. Uh, I think that was uh, maybe 20, 2017, I think. That was some... 2017, he didn't, he didn't pitch up. But I've worked with him before, and I know his, uh, his, his strengths and weaknesses. So it, 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 it was good for him to travel with the squad so that I can assess him as well. Then I, I, I also have time to talk to him. I, I also need to know what was what, what, what was going on with him. You know, and, uh, you know footballers sometimes, they need... Uh, you need to talk to them. You need to talk to them because... If, if, he, if he's low in confidence, maybe he needs maybe one or two, three ways to, 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 pick, him up, to pick himself up. So I'll talk to him, and then, uh, then from there I'll make a decision. What are you deducing from, from here? Because uh, obviously I, I don't know the history of the previous coach, if he ever played the game. But here is a guy who's speaking like a football player. I don't know. What are you deducing from, from uh, Norman? I think he's realizing that when he was playing, the kind of things that he needed himself as a player for him to play to the best of, a, of his ability are those the, th those the things that he's thinking, okay, cool, Kama needs this, this and that. Because I mean, from him, it shows very, it's very selfless and it's very thoughtful of him to determine, okay, cool, let's, let's sit down. Are you okay? Actually, even way past football, anything else, are you okay? Because he understands that all those other aspects will take into account how he will play on the pitch. So I think that is, like you said, he's playing as a person that's played before and knows what a player needs uh, when the game is going on. So it's important to know a player on and off the beach. Yes, and it shows. I mean, there's so many other things that could be working, that, that he needs to be working on, but... It's, it's like he's got a duty roster. He needs to know that, okay, cool, um, let me not forget, oh, I need to check up on Kama. Because right now, I mean, like he's, he's, he's got two yellow cards, he's not playing. So why would me as a coach um, ignore everything else and focus on someone that's not even playing the game that's, that's coming up? So I think that for me shows that he is keeping tabs and he needs to know exactly what each and every single team member, team player needs because that is what's going to make or break the Warriors. Hmm. Can Mapeza bring back the magic that we know Kama possesses? Because you go to South Africa, uh, Gavin Hunt failed to bring that magic back. Um, Stuart Baxter is struggling right now. Can Mapeza bring back that magic? Well, I think he can. Uh, but I'm um, top of the people that can bring back the old Kama villages is Kama himself. But for... This is your typical Norman Mapeza soundbite, isn't it? Here is your guy who makes it a point to know what time are my players sleeping? Mm. What are they eating? If you talk to, to these players, they will tell you that this man is a difficult man. They will tell you that. But there are no men on it. But the results are there for all to see. He has his way of doing business. It's not the most favorite of ways, but he delivers. And so this is your typical Norman Mapeza. What he hasn't told us here is, I will speak to Kama. He will tell me what's wrong with him, and I will tell him what I expect of him. <laughs> That's what Norman Mepeza hasn't told us. 
because this conversation is about okay you this is you what are your issues where do you want to play I'm the coach and this is what I expect of you and with Norman Mapeza in charge I can tell you that the days of fans from all walks of life popping their way into the national team camp are gone whether you know the team manager or the player has called you to come and see him Norman Mapeza will not whether it's lunch time or a tea time, you are not welcome. So that national team feeling, I believe now it's back. And what needs to be done is to put on the hard work and deliver the results. Mm. So Ma Marco talks about discipline, eh? So he's a strict disciplinarian, one. Two, he's a guy who expects you to conform or you ship out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How important is that for this group of players? Because, uh, you know, um, not saying that this was happening, but I think there, were a lot of, there was a lot of truancy with the previous coach. Um, what, what do you expect when the coach comes and takes a selfie with knowledge and so on and sends it to one of his girlfriends in Croatia? Why should I? You are behaving like a fan, can't you want one, 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 one in? Why should I listen to you? I mean, look, you have a coach who is behaving like one of you. The next minute he's telling you to behave. What kind of football is that? So is, is that important to have a strict disciplinary like that? Yeah, no, the discipline is important, but obviously anything done to extremes is not okay. So I, I'm going to be for the discipline um, aspect of it, but I do hope that it's not too strict because, like I said, too much of anything will, will break something. So you something. need to strike a balance. Yes, the, a balance needs to be struck, but then I can see that the balance is already there because if someone is just a disciplinary um, person, then he wouldn't care about my feelings. But here he was talking about how Kama's feeling, so it shows that he is going to be able to, to, to determine, hey, stop doing this, but how are you feeling? You know, so I think uh, it, it is important and clearly, like, I mean, that now that's, a, that's already a big difference from Logan and how he was behaving and now I do expect the boys to listen to what my peers are saying and do what they have to be doing there on the pitch. Now it's the players who are going to my peers and say we need a selfie <laughs> coach. Exactly. Look, I mean, <laughs> you've got stories here. You tell you about marking Romario. That, that's just that's yeah. huge isn't yeah. it? That's, yeah. that's huge. Uh -huh. You tell them about the dream team uh -huh. and that's, that's, that's huge. And a lot of inspirational stories. Mm. Yeah you see now but look at Rusi would have told you about what? That my village is next to Modric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, ca come on. I mean, um, we are we're in a good space now. Um, All right. So concern is also in the past matches has been the team's lack of goals. Um, and in the past, the team has uh, relied heavily on uh, Kama Bediat and uh, Knowledge Musona. Musona scored a beauty uh, this past weekend in his team's 2-1 win before he flew to Accra. So Mapeza also commented on having Norman, uh, uh, knowledge Musona and also that he's back uh, scoring goals. I think it, it, it's very important for his confidence, very important for his confidence because, you know, the last time he came here, he, he couldn't get any, any goals for, 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 for us as a nation. But, you know, scoring goals for, for your club, really, it brings back those, that, that confidence. If you look at uh, Devane, who's not here today, uh, the last two games that uh, he played for, 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 for Sundown, he has been doing very well. Doing very well. I think the last game he was, he was, he was voted man of the match. So uh, it's, it's, it's a plus for us, although he's not here. But that's what we want to hear as coaches. You know, if, if your players are doing well outside there, uh, it, it boosts the confidence of everybody, not only the player himself, but for everybody. You know, if, if, if you go into a game and knowing that you, you've got a striker who is scoring, maybe you've got 10 goals in, 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 in six matches, it, it boosts the confidence of all, all the players in the team. So I think for, for, for knowledge, yeah, he needed it, he needed it. And uh, I hope you kept that form uh, uh, against Ghana on Saturday. So yeah, he's very confident that uh, knowledge will come right. So I think the last time Norman was in charge, we played against Liberia, the National Sports Stadium. Knowledge scored a hat-trick in that game. So I think there's a bit of an understanding. And uh, if there's a person who can use knowledge Musona effectively, it's um, it's Mapeza. Do you think that magic will be there, and we'll see the captain just continuing that scoring form from uh, what he did for his team? Yeah, well, like you said, the the track record is important. He's got the experience, and he knows exactly how to use him as a catalyst. Like Marco was saying earlier on, like. Um, 
where you're supposed to be playing makes a huge difference and only the coach can determine that if I put you here, you're going to be, you know, Effective. a great yes and a, a, a great booster for the team. So that um, relationship that they have, that past relationship and just the track record with them working together, I think is definitely going to make sure that when Musona is, is playing, um, for Ghana and for the rest of the, the games that he's going to be under Mapeza is going to be used to the best of his ability. Mm, you think you will score? I'm hoping he does. Hopefully um, it will be a hat-trick again. But yeah, I think I think he will do something. He'll do something. He'll do something. I got him more of the go inside. That boy, that boy. You're watching the couch right here on Zim Papers Television Network. When we come back, we also focus on uh, probably the player with the biggest uh, uh, profile in that team, marvelous Nakamba and of course we have been hearing stories about uh, a leaky defense not so good defense uh, teenage Hadebe the stammer around he is available and we hear that he's going to be uh, touching down in Accra tomorrow so he's the last uh, Warriors player to to arrive for this uh, encounter against uh, Ghana away in uh, Ghana so we'll talk also talk about that defense and Chido has been up and about uh, she was in the streets of Harare talking to fans we also hear what the fans are saying in particular about Mapeza in this upcoming crucial games for Zimbabwe stay with us here on the couch You're watching the couch right here on Zim Papers Television Network. Uh this is our premier football show. You won't find it anywhere else in Zimbabwe, but right here on Zimbabwe's television network. So what are we talking about today? We are asking this question. Mapeza, new Warriors coach, a lot at stake, but we are asking, will he be able to save the Warriors? Well, Makomborero qualified it and says, well, let's m talk it more of the Warriors' dignity. Will he be able to, to, to salvage at least some pride, you know, some Warriors' pride? Because uh, the Warriors are wounded and they are going into battle. Remember that game against South Africa, we drew at the National Sports Stadium, went away to Ethiopia, we were beaten by a goal to nil. We are at bottom of uh, the group, uh, South Africa on four points, Ghana on uh, three, Ethiopia on three, and uh, we've got uh, just a single point. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a mountain to climb. But South Africa, not very far, eh? Because it's only, what, three points? Th that they're ahead with three points. So yeah, anything can happen. Uh, we are agreeing here in studio that anything. <laughs> but let's look at the defense. In the past matches, the Warriors have not had a permanent defensive partnership. Percent to half, even on the wings, you know. We had Tendai Darikwa, we had Chimwemwe on the uh, right side of defense. We had uh, Divine Lunga on the other wing. And uh, yeah, a lot of... Um, you know, players being tried in different positions. So we asked Mapeza, the new Warriors coach, how important it is it to, to sort that de department out, the defensive department. Uh, from what I heard, from what I heard, from what we have been, we have been reading in the press, the people have been talking about uh, you know, not having the solid central defenders. But <laughs> after the two games, I think the, the script changed. People decided to say, look, it looks like the defense is, is now much better. What we need to do is to work maybe more on the, on, on the strike force. But, uh, you know, I'm someone who is who once, uh, uh, my, my, my players have flexibility, you know, 
I, I, I sometimes want to temper with the team. You know, if I feel like I need maybe someone uh, like Munez playing in the centre back, if he's comfortable, then I'll, 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 I'll do that. I'll do that because at the end of the day, I'll be looking for combinations. You know, I'll be looking for combinations. So it's about trying those guys. But although there isn't much uh, much time to to do that, but like I said before, I'll try to talk to the, to the boys first before I, before I start to before I, I, I choose my my, my first eleven. So Mapeza, on uh, the defensive capabilities of the team, he says uh, it looks like the team has improved. Well, I take it he, didn't, he wasn't watching the matches. Because <laughs> he said, from what I'm getting from the press. <laughs> so we are really important. Because I know he was, he's also a fan of the couch. No, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, he was reading from the press, watching the couch. Macomporero uh, more and wow, he missed Chido. <laughs> so uh, th there's a presence of the UK best players. We spoke about uh, Jordan Zemur and, and Darikwa. They are there, and uh, it's a plus for the coach Norman Mapeza. But there's also a factor of having marvelous Nakamba in that team. So we asked Mapeza, how important is a player like marvelous Nakamba, you know, in that team? No, I, I think he's doing very well for Villa. You know, he's doing very well for Villa, not knowing exactly what, what, what the coach demands from him. But like I said, I also need to talk to him. You know, he, he needs to give me his, 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 his opinion on, on where he feels he can, he can give us a, a good job uh, on, on Saturday. You know, he is playing more as a defensive midfielder. But uh, like I said, you know, I, I'll, I'll sit down and talk to him. If he's more comfortable playing as a whole midfielder, then... No problem. If he feels like he maybe can do a better job playing more as a, as a box, box midfielder, then again, brilliant for us. So, Chido, from a hesitant yes at the <laughs> beginning to then you uh, going firmly behind your yes and from hearing what the coach has been saying, how confident are you on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, I don't know if I want to answer your question, to be very honest, but what I do, <laughs> what I do want to say is, I'll answer, I'll answer as it goes, but what I do want to say is I'm, I'm now questioning his um, laissez-faire attitude because it seems like he's really allowing the players to choose what they want. So uh, that could be one of two things. So it could be him distancing himself away from responsibility so that when we call him back to the couch after the game on Saturday, he will say, oh, no, but I asked, I asked what way do you want to play? And then he can be like, okay, cool, but it wasn't. Um, on me. So now I'm not very sure about that um, behavior of his, of really allowing players to be flexible. So do you want to take back your yes? I sh I'm, <laughs> my, my yes is on like a half now. It's on a half, but for... Um, you can give us that hesitant yes once again. <laughs> yeah, but for Nakamba, I'm also really excited to have him um, play because it's been very beautiful to say the least watching him play for Aston Villa. Um, yes, he's had a bit of a hiccup with that game um, a few weeks back with Chelsea. Against Chelsea. You know, yes. I, was, I was watching that game. Mm -hmm. So I'm a, I'm a very strong Chelsea supporter. Okay. And here's a boy, you know, from the boy that I really know. And, you know, I'm supposed to be on his side mm. because he's Zimbabwean. So I was torn, you know, <laughs> I was conflicted. Mm, mm. But when he went to take that sport kick, I was saying, I'm going to Shame. Yeah, <laughs> and he, did. He, he, he didn't look like a player he was ready to convert. He was yeah, he? He was, he he, was, the look on his face, it wasn't, it wasn't written all over him. But I, that's Nakamba. I'm just hoping that among, in, during that conversation, Norman Mapeza would do something f to mark Nakamba's confidence. I always think of that um, game against Botswana at the National Sports Stadium. When the invitation to shoot was there, he did not. He opted to pass. <coughs> I, 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 would, I would love to see a marvelous Nakamba who is a bit more adventurous with the ball. I would love to see him a bit more confident. Yeah. And I'd love to see a marvelous, a marvelous Nakamba who does not apologize for things that happen in football. When you miss a penalty, then you go saying sorry. It's a way of life. Is to it who? Football with to us? who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To who? Yeah. Who are you apologizing to who? Mm. Because the captain of the team has also missed the penalty. If the captain is not apologize, why are you apologizing, son? Why are you apologizing? You are giving us a hint that there's something in your armor that is not so solid. Is Nakamba too nice? I don't think it's being too nice. Now I'm worried. It shows that his um, confidence is gone. It's, it's, it's at the ground. And he's a bit... 
flimsy, but now we really need a beast. We need someone that's, you know, standing up tall and saying, okay, I'm playing right now. So that, yeah, that action of his, it, some can say that it showed a bit of like um, the humility? highest level yeah. of, yeah, humility and so, but at the same time, it shows he's a bit timid now and that's that's not what we want right now. No, we, don't need, want we need a beast. Yeah, I don't want a beast. player who plays in the English Premier League to come here and be overshadowed by a guy who plays up the Premier League. Yeah. You should play. Up you to the should standards. be mm. the main man in that dressing room. This is Aston Villa. Yeah, you play for, uh, for crying out loud. You're marking Kant. And you, a guy who is playing with, the, I mean, those funny players from Judas Mosia men. <laughs> I mean, come on. You are the man. Mm. Let it show. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, a few hours ago, Chido was. Uh, up and about in the streets of Harare talking to fans about uh, Norman Mapes and these uh, qualifiers, the upcoming games against Ghana, back to back. Uh, we are playing this weekend away in Ghana, and then uh, midweek we play at the National Sports Stadium. So here are some of the fans that Chido spoke to. When I'm at Mapes, I took one of my chance because he, you know, I'm an experience. From way way big, I got a team. I get a pain in the I need experience. I was like, I'm going to have a chance. So I got like, so I'm going to play local last time. To have a bomb there, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to my pace, I don't want to win, win it, but Bora got out of the Loga. I think Boch, you are in Ghana, woman away, Kunyepa. But Towina, one to judge your one. I think what Ninda will never call back. Ishaka would have a tanga, let the local coaches do their own thing. Yeah, in any song, good to one of my pace, and no one are going to Buddha. Alakwanza kuku katika ma combinations zake shaka naka naka. Ngaza ngo tambi sama foreign based players. Ne mamu atunongo zioti. Shero ma teams kwa u. Awasu kwa nisa kana kupi. Awasu kwa nisa kana kutamba kana kuita se. Asi agatora ma local based ne ano ziva. Tika mpa time ano buda pagan. One zero for me. Well there you have it. The people are glad that Mapeza is in the position that he is in. So, they understand that he's got a very big job on his hands, but they're glad that it's a local coach for the national team. Ghana and Zimbabwe are going to be going head-to-head -head on the 9th of October at 6 p.m. cat. The last time they went head-to-head -head was in 2006 at AFCON, and that resulted in a 2-1 victory for the Warriors. So, the, the Warriors look like they are. They have the upper hand against Ghana at this moment. This is going to be the first game for Mapeza since he was appointed as the interim coach for the national team. We will keep you posted on all the developments on this game. Zimbabwe is currently the last one in their in their group in Group G with no wins at all. So hopefully that this will be a win for the boys. So that's uh, Chido. Uh, earlier out in the streets, I've got two questions for you because <laughs> you were talking to, to, you know, different people out there. But what I deduce from the ones that uh, we used is uh, the expectations are there and uh, people kind of believe in um, local coaches. And in this case, it's Norman Mapeza. So the first question is, uh, how was it like you know just talking to people about their probably the biggest team in in the country the warriors uh, the expectations how are they like and the two do you believe what you were just saying that uh, because we beat uh, ghana in the 2006 africa cup of nations in egypt 2-1 uh, that probably is an advantage for us well firstly when i was speaking to uh, people in the streets earlier on people are hungry for a win they're hungry for some victory and obviously that is normal at at this point in, in 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 our times i mean a lot is going wrong and um the only thing that we had to blame for the losses and everything else is gone now the only person -ish. the only person we had to blame for these losses gone. is gone and so people are hoping that you know the country will 
will be the dignity will be restored so that's that's the vibe that i got from people people are hungry for a win and i really hope you know that something can happen and do i believe it <laughs> well it's the record so from that okay. record i think it could <laughs> it could mean that um we do have a bit of a chance and i think it's also just a, a boost i mean if i've done if i've beat someone before and i'm going against them again then i i feel like i'm going to oh. beat them Okay, it the queen like that. The queen yeah. has spoken. <laughs> queen has spoken. We might as well say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, look, expectations. Obviously, it shows that Zimbabweans are mad about football. They they love football, and uh, anything like what was happening, the madness that somebody goes for fourteen matches, only the returns are not that great. Only one win, you know, out of fourteen. And we still keeping that person. I, I think uh, the people have spoken. They they are also they were also not you know uh, pleased by that. But they are happy that there's a, a local coach. Uh, you know, expectations. Just take us through your own expectations. Well, my expectation is to to see the player that wear that jersey, showing the sh same passion that we show when we preview these games when we write about these games and when the supporters watch these games that's all we want and um, suddenly the players don't feel alone do they and like the first time with logger some of us gave up on that team s five six matches into logger's tenure we knew that we're done for but right now even when the boys when they dissing back whenever they uh, stop over and whatever they are creating the stop over when they watch the couch and they watch these fans now saying we believe that you guys can do it. Even if the National Sports Stadium will be empty on Tuesday, these boys will feel loved. Even when they drive along some motor show, they will feel that love. And that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Right now we talk about the dream team. It didn't win, mm -hmm. but we just believed. Gave us a lot of belief. And they gave us their all. Mm -hmm. Mercedes Rambo. You know, Vitalis Takawira, they would dive, Henry Makop. They, would they were not the best of players, but they gave you their best. That's all that matters. Yeah, some people believe they were the best players <laughs> to ever come out of Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let me put you on the spot as we round up. Game against Ghana, away in Ghana. Yeah, the first one. Mm. I think a draw. We'll get a draw. Scoring draw? Scoring draw, yeah. Scoring draw. We'll and the, the one here? I will beat them. With the way the National Sports Stadium is looking lacquer. Mm. What other guys who <laughs> were handling that turf? It's looking... So I, I think we'll beat them here. 2-1. Mm. So we're going to collect four points from... from Let's Ghana. go to the Queen. <laughs> okay. Are, are we you okay with the Queen? Uh, no, not really, but we'll talk about it later. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> for now, the, the away one. I think it may be a 1-0 win to us. I think it'll be a victory. Oh. Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a victory. That's how I see it. And um, at home, then those ones, like I agree with what he said, then we'll do better than that 1 0 that is going to come out on Saturday. Those, I, that, I, that's I, I, I had a lot of belief <laughs> with the Warriors um, away. Remember the team that was being coached by Sandy Jitzambo? Oh, yeah. um, we played against the DRC away. We played against Congo Brazzaville. Uh, look, against Congo would have won that game on the road. In the end, it was a draw. Uh, against uh, the DRC, we won, two, one away. But it was the home record now that was worrisome. Mm. But, uh, well, I would want to agree with you. Um, I expect four points from this team. And uh, that, with that, I think it depends, doesn't it? Yeah, it depends. Congratulations on our deputants. Well done. We, we need more of you. We need more female voices. So I'll yeah. give you guys more. Yeah, yeah so give us. <laughs> not more, more, more. Yeah. <laughs> more just, give us, just give us more of you. Well done. Well done on a solid debut. We will talk about that away from camera, <laughs> but you're the queen. Thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot to the couch squad. A bit different today. Chido Manua and uh, Makumborero Mutimukulu. And my name is Howard Musonza. The couch is back again uh, next week. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you
Thank you.